So just a quick one on setting sag. Every time you guys ask me a question in the comments or on YouTube, on Instagram, whatever it is, I always talk about setting up the sag, seated sag. So blah, 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 30% seated sag or 28% seated sag. Now the reason I do seated sag instead of the traditional stand on up, find your balance, get a friend to help you or lean on the wall or make sure you're in, you know, 60% of your weight's this way and not this way and blah, blah, hand on the head and you know, you're pretty much trying to play twister on the bike. It's no good. It's not really consistent. It can be consistent, but it's not. You're spreading weight all over the bike and it's a little bit hard to, it's a little bit hard to be accurate, in my opinion. So, every time I set up a bike, I use SAG just as a reference point, uh, just to know, you know, where I'm at with the spring configuration and uh, if, if I'm too deep in the SAG, I feel like I need to take a spacer out. Uh, let's, let's not talk about spring configuration because we could go on all day. Anyway, just setting your SAG. This is it. So, I don't want you to, oh yeah, yeah, cool, I'm at 77% SAG because all your weight just dropped into it. You don't do that. You just chill into it, so put the yeehaw bar up. Slowly put your weight onto the seat, slowly, slowly. You got your know, hands on the bars. Don't be leaning forward and doing it like this, like, oh, like a Superman. Doesn't work. Just all your weight on the seat until you can balance, and then get off. It's as simple as that. All your weight down, nice and slow until you got all your, weight, all your weight off one foot, and then all your weight off both feet, and then you back off. Gives me ridiculous amounts of sag because this suspension platform is, in my opinion, too progressive, and you have to run it quite deep in the sag, so 33% seems to work well. Uh, there's nothing you can really do with taking spaces out, it's already empty with the spaces. But anyway, that's your rear sag, now we'll go outside and suss out the front sag, which is a little bit less a little bit less consistent, a little bit harder to, to get exactly right, but you'll always get in the ballpark, so let's have a sus. So one, one method of testing sag on the front, which is getting a bit more popular, and for good reason, it's pretty consistent, is, but it's not, it's consistent, but it's not, uh, say if someone's setting sag up in a balanced position, their 20% is gonna be different to your 20% in this situation. So this is how a lot of guys liking to do it these days. So just all your weight on the bars, take your feet off the ground and then go back on. For me, that's no good, especially if you've got a slacker head angle because it does create a little bit more binding and you're not really gonna get an accurate read. So there, for me, I'm a 30% sag doing that. But the way I like to do it, which is this way, Bounce around, do a couple of lefts and rights, you know, break the stiction, make sure everything's free. And then the last bounce, I sit in my race position or my riding position, lean forward ever so slightly, slide the ring down, and then lean right back so I'm not putting any more weight through the fork, and it'll give me a pretty accurate reading. And that is at bang on 20%. So I've just put the B1 spring in here, so I'm out with the C1, in with the original, original debonair spring, I've got it one token at 96 PSI. So we'll see how that feels on the trail. It feels pretty good bouncing around. It's, it feels good, it just feels, it feels at home. It feels exactly how I want. It feels intuitive, it feels natural. So we'll see how it feels. We'll see how it goes on the trail. But checking your sag, that's the method I like. The one before, eh, you can do it. A lot of people are doing a lot of that. But for me, seated sag at the back and rolling sag at the front.